Through them today, you guys will be inspired to contribute to the WordPress community in kind of out of the box ways. And some of you might discover that you're already contributing. Um, and the number one way that I like to contribute to the WordPress community is by speaking, um, as, as you can obviously tell. And it all started at WordCamp San Diego in 2011 when it was my very first WordCamp. It was my 40th birthday, and I thought, I'm going to San Francisco WordCamp and seeing what this whole thing is all about. And I met Dre, who, if you're involved in San Diego or Orange County, you definitely know. And at one of the after parties that night, he came up, and him and I think Brad Williams were walking around with a video camera, and they were interviewing people at the after party. And he came up with the little red light on the video camera and pointed it at me. And I freaked the hell out, man. I pulled a full-on, like, no paparazzi and <laughs> fled the scene without saying anything. Because I was so uncomfortable with, even on camera, speaking in front of other people, you know? I didn't like the way my voice sounded on video. And, you know, I got some big teeth and I didn't want to blind anyone. And, I mean, I seriously, like, freaked out. I. I was on the speech team for about six months in high school until I was kicked off because I couldn't actually give a speech. Uh, but anyway, if you want to blame someone for me becoming a speaker, you really kind of have to blame Dre because after that, he encouraged me to do something that scared me. He told me that I had a lot to say and I needed to stop being a big baby and speak at WordCamp San Diego. So in, I think, 2012, a year after my full-on freak out at WordCamp San Francisco, I submitted a speaker application to WordCamp San Diego. And if Tony's in the room, Dre and Tony were the co-organizers, and I think I drove them to drink on multiple occasions. <laughs> because I was so freaked out and nervous that I was like a high-strength chihuahua for about a month before the event. Um, if you go on WordPress TV and you watch that thing, um, I'm not gonna lie, the first time you do something like stand up in front of 100 people, it's friggin' terrifying. And if you watch the thing, like I haven't been able to watch the presentation on WordCamp or WordPress TV because for the first five minutes, I'm, I'm gripping the edges of the podium and you can hear my knees knocking against each other and my voice, it was like Catherine Hepburn showed up in my place. It was quavering so badly. Um, but the really cool thing I discovered about five minutes into that presentation uh, I like to kind of call them the secrets of speaking at word camps. Um, the first time you see something like this, again, you're totally terrified, but what you realize after speaking for a few minutes is that everyone in the room is your friend. They want to see you do well. There's no one sitting out there unless they're a real jerk who's thinking, I hope they fail, I hope they biff it, and when they do, I'm throwing stuff at them. It's just <laughs> not gonna happen. Um, another big secret that I didn't get and is probably the reason I freaked out so hard is when you're a good speaker, it's not about you. Like, it's not about you standing up and being perfect. It's not about you looking like a rock star or trying to get new clients. What I discovered is when I approach it a speaking engagement from the, the philosophy that I screw up a lot. Like I experience our mistakes times time. And when you do it with the intention of teaching people how not to make the same dumbass mistakes you have made, uh, it's not so scary. You're sharing your knowledge. It's, it's less about putting on a show than it is sharing what you know. Uh, that was another big secret to getting over the fear of, fear of speaking that helped me out. And the third secret is that the speaker high that they tell you about is totally true. And after you speak at your first word camp, the beer at the after party afterwards will never taste any better than it does right then. <laughs> um, so I encourage you, if you haven't spoken, you don't have to start at a word camp. Um, 
I go to this awesome meetup. I'm from San Diego, and we have a group there called Advanced WordPress. And they have this really kind of interesting setup where most meetups you go to, they're kind of like a mini, a mini WordCamp presentation. You've got someone who talks to you for 40 minutes, you ask some questions, and then everyone eats pizza and drinks beer. Um, Advanced WordPress is a little bit different and it's really the first time I, I talked in front of other people because everyone in the room is invited to give a five minute spiel on something cool you've learned about WordPress. And once you can get up and talk to people for five minutes, you can get up and speak to people for 10 minutes. And every time you, you do a little more and you, you get in front of bigger and bigger groups, it gets easier. Uh, my initial reaction to speaking for the first two years was always like, oh crap. And now I look forward to it. It's something fun. It's, it's a good time. And that's an amazing thing to happen. Another benefit is it, it makes you better at work. Um, I'm looking for a full-time job right now, and when you can go in and say, I'm comfortable pitching clients, I'm comfortable standing up in front of groups and speaking to people, that's a huge thing. You know, there's this book of lists that was written in the 70s, and they asked people, what are you most afraid of? And more people were afraid of public speaking than they were afraid of dying. Um, <laughs> it ranked higher on the list. Uh, so I encourage you, if you have something to share, and everyone here has something to share. Um, if you've been talking, you know, if you've been using WordPress for two days, you know more than someone who's been using it for one. So I really encourage you to think about speaking when you think about contributing to the WordPress community. Uh, there are some resources. I've spent a lot of time over the last couple years trying to get better at what I do because I enjoy doing it. Uh, there's this great book by Scott Birkin. You guys might know him as the guy who wrote The Year Without Pants, uh, the book about working at WordPress.com for a year. He's an amazing public speaker and he's written this great book with a lot of practical advice. Uh, I spoke at WordCamp Orange County last year, the very last spot of the day opposite Chris Lemma. And because I had just finished this book, I knew that when you have like three people in the room and they're all scattered, a really great thing to do is invite everyone to come forward so that you wind up with people to talk to who are willing to learn instead of someone over there, someone over there, and someone over there all on Facebook. Um, so just really great practical advice on, on how to be a better speaker. WordPress TV is another absolutely amazing resource because you can sit down and watch WordCamp presentations and see what worked and what didn't. I know that I've learned a lot watching Chris Lemmis speak and watching Greg Douglas speak and watching really great, really charismatic speakers do their thing and see why it works. And if you guys don't know who Brene Brown is, um, She's amazing. She gave this TED talk on vulnerability and shame and how it affects everyone's life. And it may be one of the best talks I've ever seen in my life. Um, watching great speakers is a great way to get more comfortable with speaking. It's like anything else. You, you, know, you watch their films, you figure out what they're good at. Any TED Talk, really. There are so many great ones. There is Start With Why by Simon Sinek. There are great regional TEDx talks. Um, it's a great way to, to see what other people are doing that works. Another great way to contribute to the community is through writing. Um, as it was mentioned, I wrote my first uh, book in the third grade, or maybe it was the fourth grade. And, you know, the designer in me wishes that the cover would have been a little cooler than strawberry shortcake wallpaper. But it was what inspired a love of words and writing and knowing that you can take nothing and turn it into something that means something. Um, one of the things I like most about writing is the inside of my brain, my ideas are kind of like a disco ball where they're kind of everywhere. And what writing does is it helps me turn that disco ball into a laser beam. Because I'm forced to actually sit down and think about what I think, which is something I don't do a lot. I just kind of open my mouth and let things fly out. 
Huh. And there are three ways that you can do that, that, that I've personally done that. And the first is technical writing, like tutorials. That, to me, was where I started trying to share knowledge through writing. Uh, when I first got into this community, I was really active in the Genesis community. I built themes for them. Um, tutorials are great because if you want to know a subject, there's nothing like doing like 14 hours of screen recordings of you trying to get it right to really know your material inside and out. Uh, there are a lot of things that I think I know until I try to write a tutorial on it. And it's like, oh wait, I didn't think about that. Um, it's such a valuable way to, to take the knowledge you have and even if it's just a five minute tutorial, start practicing organizing your thoughts. Um, when I was in high school, after I got kicked off the speech team, I joined the newspaper staff. And the editor of the newspaper, the, the professor who taught the class, hated me because we were supposed to always write outlines of our thoughts. And I was, you know, in high school, so I was like, oh, I don't need to do that. I already know what I'm doing. And I had to Facebook her a while back and say thank you so much because I could not function in my life if I didn't know how to write outlines now. Uh, every single blog post, every single presentation I do starts with an outline so I know logically how I want to pull a story together, how I want to make sure it makes sense and it's not just me flapping my lips for an hour. Um, technical writing is a great way to do that. From there I moved on to personal blogging where I talk more about things I believe than things I do. And again, I know that it's not really popular in this country to have a well thought out reasoned argument to support why you believe what you believe. But it's nice. It's a nice perk. And so when I write pieces like that, it's really helpful for me to not only articulate what I think, but, but to help me understand it and, and a lot of times make me rethink my position on things. Um, that organization is something that without writing, I don't know that I would have. Uh, I don't think that I would understand a lot of, of what I talked about as much as I did with writing. Uh, and then I recently got hired to write guest blog posts for a company called Webflow. And this was a really interesting experience because for the first time in my life I had an editor that I was working with who would go through and call me out because when I'm personal blogging, I will go through and the only one I really have to make happy is me. Uh, and working with someone else who, who like nails you on your sentence structure and tells you things don't make sense and cuts out four paragraphs that you spent two hours writing because they're <laughs> redundant. <laughs> Those things help you become a better writer. They help you think through things more clearly. They help you articulate your thoughts more clearly. And the better you get at it, the easier it is to pass that knowledge on to the community. And I think that, that most of these things that we're talking about today, that's really the key is getting what's inside your head out to everyone else. Um, again, because the goal is to help people avoid the mistakes that I've made. Um, if I can make your life easier, awesome. You, you probably don't want to spend four hours trying to figure out what I already figured out. So hey, here you go. Take those four hours and do something with them. Resources here. Uh, there's this woman named Ash Ambridge who runs a company called The Middle Finger Project who is my biggest girl crush on Twitter. Uh, and she's just started this amazing workshop called The Six Appeal Process which can help you emotionally appeal to people because to me that's the core of writing. Um, you want it, you want it especially like writing for your own personal blog, for your own personal company page, you want in branding to get your personality out and the way to connect with people is through stories that connect with them on an emotional level. Um, I cannot recommend her program strongly enough. Another one, if you guys aren't familiar with CoSchedule, they are a WordPress editorial calendar, but what I love Almost as much as their plugin is their content marketing blog. 
they have more practical advice on how to become a better, faster, more efficient writer um, that gets, that makes it easy for people to read, that makes it easy for people to understand what you're talking about, to make it easy for people to get excited about what you're writing about. And then this book down at the end by Anne Handley, Everybody Writes, blew my mind. Like, I read this book, it's, it's easy to read, it's got lots of actionable advice, and I felt like I immediately was a better writer after reading this. Um, it really makes you think about how you put your thoughts down on paper, how you, how you organize them, how you connect paragraphs together to create a, a cohesive narrative. Um, if you want to become a better writer, these are three great ways to start. And then just start blogging or writing for other people or writing tutorials. Even forum posts can benefit, you know, if you go into the WordPress forums and answer questions. Um, it's my belief that being a good writer is one of the biggest skills you can have in this industry. Being able to express what you know in, in written documents, because so much of our communication is written now. We tweet, we use Facebook, we write emails, we write blog posts. Being able to do that efficiently is just as, as important as being able to speak to other people. It's, it's a great skill to have and it's, it's served me really well. And, and it's been a great way to connect with other people in the WordPress community. This is a huge one for me, teaching. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I went to a community college. I graduated from high school and decided that I would rather go out and be a bad kid than go to college, like I'd been groomed for my entire educational career. And when I was about 25 years old, I was working graveyard shifts at a Denny's. Oh. Um, after the third or fourth robbery, I realized that I really didn't want to be a Denny's waitress anymore. No, seriously, I worked at, like, it was called Denny's in the Hood on the graveyard shift. I worked there a month and a half. We were robbed four times. There was a riot. Someone threw a brick through a plate glass window, and I found a gun that someone had ditched after a crime in the booths. So nothing makes you want to go back to college more than, like, six months at a Denny's. Um, so I went to City College in San Diego, uh, and we were kind of like the scrappy upstart. We, you know, we weren't the Art Institute, we weren't Point Loma Nazarene College, we were paying $13 a unit. You know, we were all broke, we were all older students. And over the last 20 years, the woman who runs the department has built it up into probably one of the premier design schools in Southern California. We send people to Art Center, to California College of Arts and Crafts. Um, she's built a truly amazing program, especially when it comes to print design. But about two years ago, uh, every year the AIGA, the American Institute for Graphic Artists, has a citywide portfolio competition. And anyone going to any design school in San Diego can go and show up and professionals come down and review their portfolios. And it's a great way to get these kids jobs. They get in front of professionals. But every year when I look at the winners, the portfolios coming out of the school I went to were really, really sad. Like Wix and Weebly and Done in Flash sad. And that made me sad. And so instead of just being sad about it, I called the professor up and said, hey, why don't I come down, and when your kids are in the portfolio portion, I'll come in for an eight-hour workshop, and I'm going to teach these kids how to use WordPress so that they can build portfolio sites that can actually get them jobs. They actually, like the entire portfolio process, is built around a book. Like they actually make a book, like a big book printed for their portfolio that they're supposed to take around on jobs. And which is, you know, great if it's 1984 and people will wait for you to mail a huge package to them and then you can't apply for another job until you mail it someone else, somewhere else. So I went in and the thing that I really love about this is I went in, there were maybe 20 kids in the initial class 
Uh, and the WordPress community really rallied around the idea of what I was doing. Flywheel donated free hosting. Sean at WP101 donated a license so that they could have video tutorials. Uh, going in and introducing them to the concept that not only is this a great tool for you, but this is the kind of community that's behind it. You know, it wasn't the AIGA that sponsored this thing for you guys. It wasn't the group who knows who you are. It was the WordPress community who really rallied around and was excited about bringing new people into that community. Uh, so I went in, I did an eight hour class, not this year, but last year. I did another one this year. I started last year. Um, so I went in and I did an eight hour class and about five kids were really interested in it and worked really hard. So I went in for another four hour class just for the kids who were really into it. And something really amazing happened. Uh, there you are, Alex. It's the whole pay it forward concept. Uh, one of the reasons I teach is because a lot of people were really generous to me when I was young and dumb and didn't know anything at all. Uh, and spent a lot of time and effort and just, they helped me when they didn't need to help me. And I feel like it's my obligation because so many people were so cool to me to sort of pay it forward and pass what they taught onto me as well as the stuff that I've learned since then. So anyway, this girl Pam came into the class and in the first class she told me, I don't think this is going to be really good for me because I don't think I'm smart enough to build my own website. Which makes me sad. Um, it's, it's not a matter of being smart. Uh, but she stuck with the class and she built a website and she went to the portfolio review and I've gotten three emails from her in the last year. The first one was that Design Cut saw her portfolio online and hired her to do some illustration work for them because they liked what they saw. The second one was maybe four months ago where she got a temp job working at a company, went in, they were using the same theme that we'd used in class, and she said it was the most awesome thing in the world. I'd been there for a week and I knew more than every single person on the team. It was totally <laughs> rad. She's like, I went in and I was like, oh no, 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 no. That's not how you do that. Let me show you how. Um, and I just got another email from her that she's been hired full time by Design Cuts to be a tutorial writer because she spent 12 hours in a class putting together a WordPress website. Um, Another one of the kids got a full-time job designing WordPress websites at a local agency. And WordCamp San Diego, which just passed, another one of the students had showed up at WordCamp. And so he's become a really active member in the community. And of all the things I've done in my career, there is nothing cooler than knowing that someone else's career has changed like a whole new world opened up for them. They did not know that this was a possibility and now they're becoming you know, active in the community. One of the really cool things was uh, none of these kids knew anything about code and three of them have gone off and started learning CSS and PHP as, and, you know, as designers, that's big because we don't like code. <laughs> um, I have some more resources for learning here. WP Sessions by Brian is amazing. It's a great way, you know, kind of like I was talking about watch speakers that you dig. Um, check out how other people are teaching. Uh, you can learn a lot from it. Lynda.com, Carrie Dills rocks the Genesis videos over there. Uh, and Skillshare is another great place. I know that at the beginning of the year they were actually running a contest encouraging people to share their knowledge on Skillshare. Uh, and they could definitely use some WordPress classes over there. And this brings me to my last point about how you can give back. And this isn't so much, we talk a lot about the WordPress community. Um, and I think sometimes we forget that there's a larger community out there than, than just us, that we really can give back, not so much to WordPress, but with WordPress. Um, if you guys don't know Natalie, Natalie is amazing. Uh, she concurrently organized a WordCamp Orange County, or WordCamp Los Angeles and at the same time was organizing this amazing thing called Website Weekend. And what she did is she got a whole bunch of WordPress professionals together and a whole bunch of nonprofits together. And over a weekend, these teams built websites for nonprofits that really couldn't afford them. 
And so this was our client, and that's Natalie. And this is us having loads of fun working on this project with the client. Um, and what our team did is we took this site, uh, and it's for the Youth and Gender Media Program. And what they do is they film videos about little kids, like eight, nine-year-old kids who are gender non-conforming, and make films and go into schools and try to kind of help ease the transition for kids who are already having a really rough time. And so we kind of went a little above and beyond uh, because I am super OCD. And so we didn't just build them a website, we built them a whole brand and messaging platform. Megan redesigned their logo to make it a little more current. Um, and what's really neat is, this is what, like two years ago, Alex? Yeah, two years. The site is still up, it still works, nothing's broken. Um, the client hasn't managed to do anything to it to, to screw it up. They've actually added content to it. Um, and that's the power of WordPress, is we enabled this company who are doing great things to do those great things instead of worry about their website. And you can bet that this guy probably sings the praises of WordPress to every single person he comes across. Uh, this program inspired me to go out and do more pro bono work. Um, here's another website that I am doing for this amazing woman right now. I have a five-year-old niece with Down syndrome. And there's this lady over in Costa Mesa who has a program that teaches kids with Down syndrome how to read and do math and do other learning things. And Izzy was three and reading, which was amazing. Uh, the problem is this woman can only tutor kids in Orange County. So I approached her and said, why don't we rebrand you, give you a spiffy new logo, uh, and add some e-commerce to your site. You know, we'll hook up WooCommerce in it, and in another couple of months, when I finally get all of you know the I's dotted and the T's crossed, she's going to be able to bring a program that has helped my niece so much um, to kids nationwide. Anyone who speaks English can use this program now. Um, I don't really have any resources for this. All I can tell you is if you are interested in giving back, just follow your heart. You know, um, again, it, it's super satisfying and it's a great way to give back not so much to WordPress but with WordPress, which I think is just as important. Um, when you go out today, I want you to look around at some of the people who here who are giving back as volunteers. Um, there are so many people in our community who have given so much in non-traditional ways that I'm really hoping that when you go out there today, you start asking yourself, how are you going to contribute? How are you going to give back? Um, because honestly, you get so much more than you give. It's one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. And like I said, the reason I speak is to share some of the stuff that I've learned so that you guys don't have to go through it. And really, you know, speaking and teaching and writing and, and doing good with WordPress are some of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my life. And, and I'm really hoping that you guys want to get involved in that too because it's, it's, an, amazing, it's an amazing way to give back. Um, and thanks for, for being here and letting me talk to you for 40 minutes. And I'll open it up for questions now. Oh, you know what I did want to say? I wanted to give a shout out to Mendel and Aaron Hockley and Raquel Landefeld um, for having awesome photography on the internet that I could just snatch and make slides out of. So thanks for being so talented. Um, does anyone have any questions? No one? Um, do you have any advice for people who can't focus on writing? Let's say they want to write a handful of blogs, then they just start all the blogs, and then after a week, they've accomplished nothing but five half-written blogs. OK, so the question is, um, how do you focus on getting an entire blog post written? And like I said, the inside of my head is a disco ball. So what I do is I keep a Google Docs folder and every time I have some random flash of idea, I throw it in a Google Docs, a Google Doc, 
and my rule is it has to be a fully formed enough idea in my head to put together a loose outline. So if I have at least five bullet points that I put under there, it's an idea that's probably going to stick that I can't get out of my head and I throw it in there. I have blog posts that are like six months old lingering in there that, that are halfway written. Um, but I can go back to them. You know, I can at least get the thoughts down because if I don't, they're like gone forever. Um, but that's been my biggest help is just keeping track. I also have an old school notebook. So when I'm somewhere um, without a phone and I have an idea, I can scribble it down in there. But yeah, I'm super ADD. Um, and so, so being able to just kind of keep a, a working file. And then when the spirit moves me, I can pull it out and, and bang it together a lot faster. That Everybody Writes is a great book for that kind of thing. And the Co-Schedule blog actually has a worksheet called How to Write a Blog Post When You Don't Feel Like Blogging. Um, and it's basically a worksheet you fill out and it helps you get that outline together so that your blog post is halfway written. Um, when I write, I write for like 10% of the time and I edit it and tweak stuff and move stuff and rewrite the same sentence 50 times. So I feel your pain. <laughs> Uh, it's coschedule.com forward slash blog. Yeah. Yeah, that's great advice. You know, just keep it in a folder, keep up on it. Exactly. Now, on, honestly, I think that I have one blog post in there that's about a year and a half old, but eventually, you know, it's, it's fairly timeless. Anything that's super timely, I try to write right away because otherwise I'll have like a half done blog post and it's like, yeah, that plugin doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> Alex. I want to explain to you, uh, I see, I, I Go on the next website weekend is. I'm sure she'll be thrilled. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. Um, it's actually a brand new class. I read um, Ash's blog at the Middle Finger Project, and I. Fair, fair warning, it's like all caps NSFW, as you can <laughs> tell by the title of her, her talk. Um, the six appeal process is taking a lot of the lessons that she's taught in her blog and just kind of packaging it up into a class. Uh, it's aimed more towards people like, say you're building your website and you need to write your copy for it and, and you're not really sure on your brand or your tone or your voice. What she can help you do is she walks you through this process of figuring out your personal brand and how to convert that into copy that's going to connect with people. Um, I don't know if you've ever gone to like a website and it, the copy has a case of devitis where people seem to think that when you write, you, the bigger the words you use, the smarter you look, when really it's the exact opposite. Like, like I was saying, my editing process is 90% deleting things and using smaller words. 
Um, and so that's a lot of it. It's like simplifying your writing and it's finding, it's finding your emotional hook. You know, do you make people happy? Do you make people sad? Um, if you're like Ash, there's this hilarious girl in San Diego um, and her tagline is, I build brands for women with heart-driven businesses who cuss a lot. Um, and so it is, it's finding, she helps you find that one thing about yourself or your company that makes you completely unique and how to express that in a way that connects with other people. Because I mean, that's what business is ultimately about, especially ours. It's all about relationships and it's all about connecting. Um, but I, like I said, if you can stand a little bit of salty language, she's got great advice. Are we all? We're all wrapped up. Thanks again, you guys, for...